Our real met? Pat, Pat. And here's a marvelous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green flush shall be our stage. This hawthorn break our tiring house. And we shall do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Peter Quince? To what sayest thou, bully button? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisme that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw his sword and kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Fire lake in a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not to wait. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say that we will do no harm with our swords and that fear miss is not killed deep. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but bought from the weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we shall have such a prologue and it shall be written in eight and six. No. They get two more, but let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? I fear it. I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God shield us. A lion amongst the ladies is the most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful world below than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he must speak plainly, saying thus, or to the same effect, Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours if you think I come hither as a lion. It were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am man as other men are, and he shall say plainly and loudly that he is snug the joiner. Well, it shall be so, but there are two hard things. One is to bring moonlight into the chamber, for you know Pyramus and this being meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine that night we play our play? Our calendar, our calendar, look to film that. Find out moonshine, find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why then, may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open, and the, may the moon shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he is to disfigure or to present a person of moonshine. And there is another thing. We must bring a wall into the chamber, for Peter, Miss, and Thisby, as says the story, did talk through a chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And it doesn't have some rough cast or some long or some plaster about him to signify wall. Or let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny may Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, you will enter into that break, and every one according to his cue. What hempen homespun have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What a play toward? I'll be an auditor. An actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. This be done for. This be the flowers of odious savor sweets. Odors. Odors. Odor savor sweets, so hath thy breath, dearest this be dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while. By and by, I will to thee up here. A stranger pyramus than airplane here. Must I speak now? I marry you must, for you must understand he goes but to see a noise that he heard and is to come again. Most lady and pyramus, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose and triumphant briar. A brisky and juvenile and each most lovely Jew, a, a true of true's horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Ninny's tomb. Ninny's tomb, man. 
why you must not speak that yet, that you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue has passed. It is never tired. Oh, as true as true as horse, that yet would never tire. If I were fair, fair this be, I would be thine. Oh, monster, so strange we are haunted. Play master's blind master's house. Why do they run away? This is a, a knavery of them to make me afeard. O oh, Bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? You see an ass head of your own, do you? Bless thee, Bottom, bless thee. Thou art translated. I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me, if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will walk up and down and I will sing and they shall hear I am not afraid. The ooze of cock so black can do with orange tawny bill. The thrust so with the nut so true and rend with little quell. What angel wakes me from the flowery bed? The fish, the sparrow and the lark, the plants on cuckoo grey. Who's not full many a man doth bark, and dares not answer nay. For indeed, who would set their wit to so foolish a bird? Who would give it a lie, though it cry cuckoo? Never so. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamoured of thy note. So is my eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me to say at the first view, I love thee. <laughs> Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And yet, to say truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. The pity that some honest neighbors will not make them friends. <laughs> Nay, I can plead upon occasion. <laughs> thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> Not so neither, but if I had wit enough to get out this wood, I have enough to serve in my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common right. The summer still doth tend upon thy state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I will give thee fatties to attend on me. And they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness so, that thou like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, cobweb, malt, mustard seed. Betty. And I. And I. And A. Where, Where shall, shall we go? go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him apricots and dewberries. With purple grapes, green figs, and with mulberries. The honeybags steal from the humblebees. And for night tapers, crop their waxen thighs. And light them at the fiery glowworm's eyes. To have my love to bed and to rise and pluck the wings from the painted butterflies to fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Not to him elves and do him courtesies. Hail, Warto, hail! 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 I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb! I shall desire you of more acquaintance, good Master Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, honest gentleman. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your, your mother, and Master Piscod, your father. Good Master P -P Blossom, I shall desire of you much more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you, sir. Mustard Seed. Good Master Mustard Seed, I know your patience well. That same cowardly giant like ox beef hath devoured many a gentleman of your house. I promise you, 
Your kindred hath made my eyes water ere now. I desire of more acquaintance, good mustard seed. Come, wait upon him, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every lamenting flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my lover's tongue, bring him side.